Workshop in a box comprises two suitcases, containing an infrared and a UV-vis spectrometer, a rucksack containing the IR spectrometer power supply, a laptop and teaching materials, and a box containing samples for use in the workshop. If any of these items are missing or damaged, use the phone number provided with your booking to report the problem. The UV-vis spectrometer is dealt with in a separate video. You will want to set up the IR spectrometer at least 30 minutes before the class. It can be left to one side if you have other classes beforehand. This allows it time to warm up and for the internal dehumidifier to run. Release the clasps, as shown here, to open the IR spectrometer suitcase. The spectrometer is in two parts. Remove each of them carefully, they are surprisingly heavy. Make sure not to touch the round windows or apertures in each of the two units. Line up the two parts, making sure that the front part is above the two tabs on the rear part of the spectrometer and slide them into place. Press down hard on the grey button. It will pop up flush with the surface with a click when the units are correctly together. Everything else is in the rucksack. It should contain a laptop with power supply and mouse, a power supply for the spectrometer, an ethernet cable and adapter for connecting the spectrometer to the laptop and teaching materials for the workshop. The power supplies have the same connecting plugs but different voltages, so it is vital that you use the correct power supply for the unit. Here you can see the labelled supply for the IR spectrometer. Plug the supply into the rear of the spectrometer, making sure to attach it with the clip as shown. This stops it being pulled out during operation. There is no on-off switch on the spectrometer, so switch it on at the wall socket. A light will come on on the spectrometer. If it is green, it's operating correctly. An amber light indicates that the humidity is not absolutely correct, but the IR spectrometer can still be used. If you leave the spectrometer plugged in for between 15 and 30 minutes, you should see the amber light turn green. This means the IR spectrometer has warmed up and the internal dehumidifier is working. If the indicator LED is still amber, the spectrometer should be fine to continue with. If the indicator LED is red, or if you have any other issues, call the phone number provided with your booking for help. At a minimum, you'll want to set up the IR spectrometer 30 minutes before the class. This gives it time to warm up and run any necessary diagnostic tests. If possible, plug in the IR earlier, even if you don't connect it to the computer until 30 minutes before. This gives time for the internal dehumidifier to work. Set up the laptop to the right of the IR spectrometer and plug it in. Connect the ethernet cable to the rear of the spectrometer as shown. And the other end of the cable plus its adapter into the front USB port of the laptop. This ensures you can access the other USB port to plug in the mouse. Switch on the laptop, wait until it boots up and then enter the password as given here. Now that the laptop is booted up, we'll use a screen capture program for the rest of this video. Click on the icon for the Opus program and enter the password as shown here. Hit OK to close the welcome dialog box. The spectrometer will now go through some self-diagnostic tests, which could take up to 10 or 15 minutes. The bar at the bottom of the screen will show you the progress of these tests. It's possible for some of these tests to throw up issues or even a failure the first time they are run. For example, here a failure has occurred and a PDF reporting the fault has opened. You can just close this document. The circle as highlighted here will show the results of the test. If it's green, you can move on to the next section of this video. If it's yellow or red, as it is here, click on the circle and a diagnostic results window will pop up. If any of the instruments say failed or expired, double click on the box describing the test to run the specific test which will correct the previous fault. The results of the second test should be success, which will be displayed in a PDF pop-up as shown here. The indicator may be green or yellow here, but if all tests have been passed, you can move on to the next section. If you still see a failure at this point, do not close the PDF. 
Call the phone number provided during your booking to report the problem. Before running any sample spectra, it's important to run a background scan to ensure any molecules in the air do not interfere with the final spectrum of your sample. Before you run the background scan, make sure the arm of the spectrometer is raised. Select Measure Background on the left-hand side of the screen. The program will run 10 scans of the background, which will be averaged. This background reading will then be subtracted from the later sample measurements. Once the background measurement is complete, the Measure Sample button will appear on the left and you can now move on to the sample analysis. You may be wondering why you do not need the arm down for liquid samples, but you do for solid samples. The reason behind this is to do with how the IR spectrometer works. When you place a sample onto the plate, you're placing it onto a diamond, which is under the little square. The IR radiation is then fired from the back part of the spectrometer and reflected up into the diamond through which it bounces by total internal reflection. As it bounces along, it interacts with the sample through an evanescent wave. It is during this interaction that the molecules of the sample are vibrated, and the chemical information collected is sent along with the IR light back to the detector. Liquid samples make enough contact so that the evanescent wave penetrates deep enough to allow enough information to be collected. Solid samples, however, require the arm to push them down to ensure enough contact is made. If this doesn't happen, the spectrum will be very poor as not enough information is being sent along from the sample. With the arm raised and rotated out of the way, use a pipette to place a few drops of the liquid sample onto the plate so it covers the diamond completely. Rotate the arm so it lies above the sample, but do not lower it. Click on Measure Sample. Don't alter the experiment name, but set the sample name to your own choice. Then press Start Sample Measurement. The window will close and the spectrum window will open. This is showing you your spectrum, but isn't saving the data yet. Press Start Measurement in the bottom left hand side of the spectrum window to begin recording the spectrum. As before, the progress bar at the bottom of the window will show you the percentage of scans complete. Once the sample measurements are completed, your spectrum is displayed. You can increase the number of scans taken during sample measurement and set up measurement advanced settings as shown for increased sensitivity. Be aware, however, that this will mean sample measurements will take longer to run. 10 scans will give high enough quality data in most cases. Extra care must be taken with volatile samples, as they may start evaporating during the sample measurement which will result in a poor spectrum. To overcome this, you can reduce the number of scans which will reduce the sample measurement time, but will result in lower quality spectra. Or preferably, add more sample during the running of the measurement. This may need to be done continuously for very volatile samples, or halfway through for less volatile samples. Once you have your spectrum, Peak picking is performed to give the wave number of each peak by clicking on the peak picking icon as shown here. You can make the system automatically calculate the most prominent peaks or you can use the drop down menu for interactive peak picking. This will give you a horizontal line to allow you to choose the transmittance below which to measure the wave number. When doing interactive peak picking, in order to keep the chosen peaks, press store, which takes you back to your spectrum with the peaks you have chosen. You can save the spectrum as shown here to a PDF file for later analysis. These files can be transferred to a USB stick if you wish to view them later. Once you have your spectrum, click on the library search icon on the left of the screen. This will automatically compare your spectrum to those held in the program's library of compounds and give you a number out of a thousand for hit quality. In other words, how well it matches to the spectrum within the library for that compound. Click on the check mark and it will bring up the spectrum from the library to compare with your own. Note that if you save the image file at this point, it will save both your recorded spectrum and the library file analysis. We can see this by opening the two PDF files in turn. The first has only the spectrum you measured, 
and the second includes the library matches. To leave library search, hit the exit button in the lower left hand of the library scheme. To start a new sample measurement, you will need to clear the previous spectrum, or as we show here, open a new one. Clicking on new spectrum window will open a brand new window while retaining your previous spectrum. You can right click on a spectrum window and just remove it from the display. When you have your blank spectrum window, you can click on next sample to begin your sample measurement. We will do this now, but with a solid sample. For solid samples, the arm must be in contact with the sample, pressing it firmly down onto the lower window. Push the upper handle forward. If it doesn't touch the plate or cannot go all the way forward, due to being too low, you need to adjust the arm. To lower it, you turn the collar in an anti-clockwise direction as shown. Stop as soon as you feel resistance. Do not over tighten it. To raise the arm, do the opposite and then follow the previous step to adjust it to the correct height. Once the arm is in place, you can use the handle to raise and lower it onto the samples. Swivel the arm out of the way and clean the diamond surface with IPA on a tissue. IPA is ideal as it evaporates quickly. This should be done between every sample measurement and is important to ensure no cross-contamination happens between samples. Making sure the arm is out of the way, take a small amount of solid from the sample vials provided using a microspatula. A microspatula tip's worth is enough to ensure the square central window is covered as shown. Swivel the arm back over the window and push the handle forwards and down until it clicks into place. Failure to click will result in poor spectra due to poor contact between the solid sample and the diamond underneath. Click measure sample and as before change the sample name, then press start sample measurement and start measurement. The spectrum will now be recorded. You can use the peak pick library search and save options with solid samples in the same way you did with liquid samples. When you've finished with your samples and saved everything, clean down the plate and arm with IPA and a tissue as shown. Shut down Opus discarding any changes in the pop-up window and then close the laptop down. If you have another class later on, leave the IR unit plugged in and switched on. Otherwise, switch off the IR spectrometer at the wall socket and disconnect the power supply. Remember to remove the metal clip from the power cable before you take the plug out of the spectrometer. Also, disconnect the Ethernet cable from the spectrometer and the laptop. Dismantle the IR spectrometer by pushing down hard on the grey button until it clicks. Then slide the front part forward and lift up and away from the back section. Pack the two spectrometer pieces back into the suitcase carefully as shown. Close the lid and ensure both clasps close completely. Then pack away the laptop, teaching materials, power supplies, ethernet cable and adapter and mouse into the rucksack.